Hi, my name is Graham Cook and you're watching Brilliant TV. Happy Christmas! I love this time of year. I love the deepening connections with people, celebrating the gift of Jesus and embracing his life, love and laughter. I love the whole thing of renewing relationships, thinking about people, purchasing gifts in line with people's personality. Maybe that's why I get all kinds of weird stuff. And remembering what Jesus purchased for each of us by his sacrifice on the cross. All of our lives, we give thanks for his yieldedness, his quiet submission as he practiced the art of acquiescence to something and someone that was bigger than him. We see the art of acquiescence in his constant dialogue of, I only say what my father is saying. I only do what he is doing. My meat and my drink, literally the very things that sustain life, is to do the will of him who sent me. In anguish and great distress, he cried out in Gethsemane, let this cup pass from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Acquiescence is a quiet submission, making no opposition to assent to something that's beyond you. It carries with it the focal points of agreement, acceptance, conformity, yielding, and the consent to obey. We celebrate that he left the glory of heaven and became human, a limited version of himself. He consented to becoming sin. He agreed to being a sacrificial lamb. He yielded to torture, humiliation, and a cruel death. He made no opposition to being separated from his Father for our sake. Acquiescence is an adjustment to a higher reality or cause. And it comes with a price. The acceptance of things that you're not going to like. But in each time, in ways that we cannot perceive at the beginning, acquiescence bears more fruit that's more powerful than we can possibly imagine. For Jesus, he gained a bride. He restored the Father's dream of having his own people. And the Holy Spirit became the powerhouse of kingdom activity here on earth. I remember the first time I began to learn the art of acquiescence. It was late 1973. I had a great testimony and God wanted me to speak publicly. Honestly, I was horrified. I was and still am a born introvert. I also at that time had a very bad stutter and a non-existent self-esteem. I mean, it wasn't low, it was dead. I argued, I cried, I was distraught. And my mentor was bewildered. It's like, Graham, it's just a testimony, Graham. It's just 10 minutes. I told the Lord all the reasons why I couldn't do it. And the only thing he said was, would you do it for me? I acquiesced, thinking it was just an ordeal I would have once. Acquiescence is an agreement to go beyond yourself in conformity to him. I had no idea that 44 years later, I would still be practicing yieldedness in this area. He made me a promise that as I walked up the steps to the platform, he will be waiting for me on the stage. I walked up the steps as though I was walking to the gallows. I remember I mumbled and stumbled and bumbled my way through my story, stuttering, red-faced, utterly humiliated. I felt like I died in public. I left the hall and the proceeds of my stomach in the restroom. It took me days to recover. Six people became Christians. Honestly, I didn't care. I was a survivor convinced I had just made the ultimate sacrifice and positive I could look forward to a life of complete obscurity. Yeah, well, I think we all know how that one turned out. Over the next years, my acquiescence increased, and my horror was 
unabated. Same promise, same result, same predicament. I obeyed, God moved, I threw up in the restaurant. I've never lost my sense of nervousness in the time before I speak. Some things don't get easier, but it's just that we get better. What changed for me was my expectation of the Holy Spirit who was waiting for me on stage. And I made the walk alone with my nerves, but also a small smile because I knew he was waiting for me. And on that walk to the podium, I lost myself in him. I was resting, satisfied in his promise. I've spoken to millions of people, seen my reward in the letters and stories of transformation. Today, I'm much more of an ambivert. That's an introvert plus another. I think we all know what his name is. In 2005, the Lord asked me a ridiculous question. Graham, what's a prophet doing with a not-for-profit ministry? I thought, I thought he was joking as I exploded with laughter. But his silence gave me a sinking feeling. Uh, what should I be doing? I asked him nervously. I want you to give up your 501c3 non-profit designation and get a business license. What? I was alarmed, shocked, appalled, and intimidated. I mean, what I knew about business, I could write on the back of a postage stamp with a six-inch paintbrush. Seriously. I had spent years building up the ministry. I had some great sponsors. I knew how to trust the Lord for finance. We were comfortable, and I was okay. And now, suddenly, I'm thrust into a new area of experience and activity. I acquiesced with some serious trepidation. I told all the people who were supporting my ministry, who were just as horrified as me. I walked away in agitation and I got a license and I started Brilliant Bookhouse, our online store and publishing business. My beautiful number one daughter, Sophie, eventually joined the business and is now the operations director. She's the brilliant one. I'm still somewhat clueless about business, but I do know how to hear the Lord. And it has been an ongoing acquiescence in learning to do business His way in a kingdom context. I'm conforming to His will in the way we work as a company. I live in quiet submission to his will. I'm quite stubborn about following the direction of his leading. But it's submission that pushes you into places of divine development where you cultivate God's ability through your own conformity. He makes all the difference, always. Acquiescence, I've discovered, is a process of change that requires constant consent because the development process is ongoing. The art of acquiescence is in exchanging your own security from what you can do to the security of who he is for you. I'm learning in business that the real art of acquiescence is conforming to a kingdom business modality when the world seems to make more sense at the time. I'm still resting satisfied without making opposition. And my reward has been to develop three businesses under the brilliant name. I have lots of great staff in partnership with a kingdom cause. Our products are all around the world and huge numbers of people are being changed and they're discovering the new man in Jesus. Acquiescence is not just giving up, it's actually growing up into Jesus in all things. I have many stories of practicing the art of acquiescence. All of them have changed me considerably. Along the way, 
your conformity to Jesus gradually eliminates fears, insecurity and inadequacy. And you learn to exchange control over events to a beautiful self-control over your own heart in the process. So, what is the Father putting in front of you right now? Do you feel small next to the opportunity? <laughs> Do you want to scream and head for the hills? <laughs> the art of acquiescence is a beautiful way to live. There's a comfort in conforming to His will. There's a joy in learning to yield to the one who can do everything. And your agreement with his relentless passion for you is what makes it all work. Your quiet submission to his power and his capacity. And that creates in you the, the kind of peaceful disposition to walk in his way, his truth, his life. This year at Christmas, as you celebrate Jesus saying yes to being the sacrificial lamb. Say yes yourself to him about something in your life that's bigger than you. Have a peaceful, joyful Christmas with family and friends. God bless you. Thanks for listening.